We're here at Space uh, 2008 with Day Prize nominee Craig Bogart of The Ineffables. Hello. Craig, uh, welcome. Uh, thanks Thank for uh, spending some time talking to us. I gotta, pleasure. I got to say I really loved The Ineffables. It was uh, really a cool book. Thank you very much. Yeah, Could you tell us a little bit about how uh, The Ineffables came to be? Um, I try to describe it to people as a uh, science fiction, political, satire, mystery, adventure series. I kind of cast the net wide to encompass uh, every genre I could think of. Okay, <laughs> so uh, how long have you been doing Ineffables, Craig? Uh, since about uh, the fall of 2001. Yeah, I detect uh, a lot of different uh, comic book influences uh, in Ineffables. Uh, do these stem from uh, your early reading days? Uh, the two biggest influences I have for this book are uh, Bob Burton's Flaming Carrot and Steve Gerber's Howard the Duck, actually. <laughs> Uh, although a lot of my visual vocabulary yeah, seems to come from 60s Marvels. Yeah, yeah well, the, the Abe Lincoln, uh, obviously, is in the spirit of uh, Simon and Kirby's Captain yeah. America. <laughs> yeah. And the Gorman, too, is Big Kirby. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Clarity is uh, looks like it popped out of Steve Ditko's head. Yeah. So, <laughs> definitely a lot of that. I mean, that was stuff I picked up on, you know. I'm obviously, a very nice nod to Gerber, by the way. Well, thank you very You're much. the only one who did that. That's but Bob Corby is wearing the Howard the Duck button. Yes, he is. So... <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it looked like Abe Lincoln got his uh, fighting moves from Cap himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all in the world's toughest patriotic comic character. Sure. You, you ever do any teaching with comic, I mean, like history or science or anything? Or is this just like a hobby that you research on your own on the internet, that kind of thing, and, and put it in the comic book? I don't know, because it was, so, because it was so, much, so much politics and science in the book that it seemed like maybe, I don't know. Well, I, do I try to draw from sources outside of just reading comic books, so, you know, to make it more interesting. Right, I just didn't know if you yourself were oh, maybe no. a teacher at one time, or if it's just no. all hobby, you know, all no. hobby, the gathering of information as a hobby. Just trying to draw interest from uh, a number of fields. So. Yeah, how many years does uh, the um, stories in Ineffable span, in terms of your the time you created them? Uh, the first ones were set in the present day, and uh, I did do a storyline where it they act, it actually followed a period of time where I had a hiatus in self-publishing so I wrote that into the the story itself where they had disappeared for about four decades no, so uh, there's a, a book called Prime Mover that'll okay. turn up in a trade paperback hopefully by the fall sure. that was set in the year 2050 yeah. Sure. No, I meant actually in terms of uh, real time and creating it, because I could really see ah. your art style develop um, from mm -hmm. from some of the stories at the beginning towards the later. Um, uh, you know, it just gets better and better, and it's a lot more Thank fun you. to read. <laughs> uh, let's see. The earliest one in this trade paperback was probably around 2003, and uh, then the the final chapter was uh, 2006. So. Sure. Okay. And uh, are you working on any other projects besides Ineffables? I'm a member of a small press collective called Panel. We're all uh, based in Columbus, and we produce anthologies twice a year. Cool. So what's the next one that's coming out? Uh, the one that we're debuting today is Panel Work. Terrific. It's an uh, inner office mail envelope stuffed with many comics from about six different creators. Cool. So, that sounds great. So you said 2006 was the last chapter in here. Is there more after this? Or? Uh, I have a brand spanking new Ineffables out on the floor there, too. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> you bring in, are you bringing in any more historical characters? Uh, let's see. In fact, I am. Um, uh, if you don't want to leave any, reveal any spoilers, <laughs> All right. it's a new no, plan on buying the book. Part, so. <laughs> part, of the, part of the gimmick of the group is that uh, they've existed in one form or another in Mystery City for over a hundred years. So I do occasionally pull in different historical figures to have been members. And Excellent. a few of them do pop up in this latest chapter. I saw one of the comments on the back of the book was uh, comparing your work to uh, Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol. Um, was that an influence of yours? Uh, actually, no. Really? Uh, I think that's where the Steve Gerber thing comes from, actually. Yeah. Uh, I would I would call Gerber the, the 70s Grant Morrison, I guess. So. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, you can see the comparisons. Um, if people want to find your book on the web, where can they look? Uh, www.theineffables.com. Okay, well, uh, we appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk with us, and we look forward to seeing what you have um, coming down the line. All right, thank you very much. Take care. <laughs>